So what does weight in pounds and ounces have to do with capacity in gallons, cups and tablespoons? It is the number 16. Both of these totally unrelated units use exactly the same math based on the number 16. There are 16 ounces in a pound, 16 tablespoons make a cup, 16 cups make a gallon. Exactly the same math will work for working with both of these units. In this video, I'll show you how to do division of these units using fractions. There will be no need to convert anything into anything else. We'll be using fractions, no decimals. So that means that you need to be fluent with fraction addition and fraction multiplication. Fraction multiplication with a whole number, not fraction with fraction, just with a whole number. The tablespoons and cups, I do want to mention it, are, and that's why I have this memory jogger there, are as defined in the US customary system of measurement. These are US gallons, US cups, and US tablespoons. There are imperial gallons. There are no imperial cups. It doesn't exist. There are imperial tablespoons and imperial teaspoons. But teaspoons and tablespoons in the imperial system are defined in terms of whole, <coughs> whole number metric multiples of milliliters, such as 5, 10, and 15. Like a dessert spoon is 10 milliliters. So they, are, they don't exchange in multiples of 16. Only the US customary system has this six multiples of 16 exchange rate between the units. Okay? So don't go outside the US customary system for this math and this video. On this half of the sheet, I will have pounds and ounces, two sample calculations stacked and gallons, cups and tablespoons will be two sample calculations likewise. Pounds and ounces is applicable to boiler making, metal fabricating, welding, hoisting, rigging and lifting fabricated items or anything that is measured in pounds and ounces. Luggage is measured in pounds and ounces and jet fuel as well. So the math will be applicable to these. Of course gallons, cups and tablespoons come from recipe conversion and work in the kitchen, but milk or olive oil as kitchen ingredient also exists as milk and olive oil as commodity. Okay, so those gallons apply there as well. It's the same gallons. Now, I recognize there are units bigger than a gallon, such as barrel. There are other units between cups and gallons, pints and quarts, as well as other units between cups and tablespoons, like gills, but those don't exchange in multiples of 16 either. And there are also units smaller than a tablespoon, such as teaspoon, but they don't exchange in multiples of 16 either. So the 16 mace math will work with these units of measure. All right, let's get started. And especially let's get started with a straightforward number such as 4 pounds and 8 ounces. And let's divide it by an easy number such as 2. It's an easy number because 2 is a factor in both 4 and 8. And there will be no remainders. How this one is done is that this is going to be the pounds column and this is going to be the ounces column. This is a composite number. So it has two different units of measure in it featured, so pounds will be written here, ounces will be written there. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 pounds. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 ounces. And put a dash between the two of them, 2 pounds, 4 ounces. You can do this in your head, but I'm just showing you how the layout works. Two things. That is a dash. That's not subtraction. It's not minusing. When you say two pounds, four ounces, you mean two pounds and four ounces or two pounds plus four ounces. This is an additive dash, not a subtractive. Okay? The other thing 
is that division starts at the left and works to the right. I'll explain more about it in a minute. Let's do another one with gallons and cups. How about another number, different numbers such as six gallons and nine cups divided by three. It's an easy number again. Three is a factor in both six and nine. So six divided by three is two and nine divided by three is three. Two gallons, three cups fairly straightforward. Now what happens when the divisor doesn't go into the number to be divided, the dividend, doesn't go into it without a remainder? I'll show you what happens. So let's have a different number. How about 14 pounds 7 ounces and let's divide it by an evil number 3. 3 is an evil number now because uh, it does go into 7 but not without a remainder and it also goes into 14 but there will be remainders. So let's see how this plays out. 14 divided by 3 is 4. 4 by 3 is 12, 13, 14. We have a remainder of 2, write the remainder down like so. Now that's not 4 to the power of 2, that's not 4 squared, that's 4 and the remainder of 2. What you do with the remainder, because division is not done, the remainder needs also to be further divided, but don't make decimal. We're working with fractions. So, you copy the division sign and the divisor underneath the remainder, like so. That's a fraction bar, but it's also a division sign, because every fraction is a division. And that divisor is now a denominator because every fraction is a division. It doesn't become a denominator, it's the same thing. So now there's a fraction, four and two thirds of a pound. Well, technically it's a mixed number now, but there's a fraction in it. We repeat the same process with the ounces. Seven divided by three is two, two by three is one, plus one, two by three is six, plus one is seven. And again, Copy the division idea and the divisor down there. Two and one thirds ounces. Now let's think it through just for a sec. If you have seven divided into three groups, in each group you have two and one third. You have two plus two plus two, and you have one third plus one third plus one third. In total you have six, and one third plus one third plus one third makes, makes a whole and the 6 plus 1 is 7. So you see division works this way with fractions perfectly fine when the remainder, the div division of the remainder is just indicated by using a fraction. A fraction is a division that isn't carried out, only indicated. And these fractions work perfectly fine. Now, a fractional amount is fine in the smallest unit column. This is the smallest unit of measure. So in this column, a fractional ounces is fine. But it's not fine in anything bigger than the smallest unit. In this case, it's, it's pounds. So the fractional amount of, the, of this pound, of this amount in the pounds column, needs to be carried over to the ounces column. The four just copies down into the final answer, but the two-thirds needs to be carried over. This is how it's done. Two-thirds needs to be multiplied by 16 because 16 ounces make a pound. 2 by 16 is 32 and you standard multiplication of a fraction with a whole number, you multiply the numerator with the whole number and write it down in the numerator position. And the denominator just gets copied over like so. The answer is 32 over 3, but now it's an improper fraction. I want to make a mixed number out of it. 32 divided by 3, because every fraction is a division. 32 divided by 3 is 10. Yeah, 10 by 3 is 30, plus 2 is the remainder. And because that remainder needs to be further divided, that further division is indicated by making a fraction. 10 and 2 thirds ounces. So, 
the meaning of this 10 and 2 thirds is that 2 thirds of a pound equals 10 and 2 thirds ounces. This ounces amount now needs to be added to whatever else is already in the ounces column. So these two fractions or these two mixed numbers need to be added together. 10 plus 2 is 12. 2 thirds plus 1 third is 3 thirds. 12 and 3 thirds. Well, 3 thirds makes a whole number. So 12 plus 1 is just 13. And that's the final answer to this division question. 4 pounds, 13 ounces. Like I said, I'm going to talk about why it starts on the left and, pro and the progresses towards the right is this. Because the fractional pounds need to be carried over into the lesser unit of measure, into the ounces column. Always from left to right. Whereas with multiplication, we started with the smallest unit of measure and amounts were carried over to the, to the uh, greater units of measure columns. So, but uh, this is not multiplication, it's division, and it goes from left to right, whereas, whereas multiplication did go from right to left. So, stick with left to right with division. Let me show you another example with uh, gallons and cups over here. How about uh, 15 gallons and 9 cups divided by uh, 4? How about 4? There will be remainders again, as 4 is not a factor in either 9 or 15. 3 by 4 is 12, 13, 14, 15. We have a remainder of 3. Same procedure applies. The divisor now is 4, so we indicate the division of the remainder by making the remainder into a fraction. Same for cups. 9 divided by 4 is 2. 2 by 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And the same fraction is created. Now, this is fine for fractional cups, but this is not fine for fractional gallons. The 3 gets copied down into the final answer, 3 gallons. But the 3 quarter of a gallon needs to be carried over into cups as previously. Of course, 16 cups make a gallon and the 3 quarter needs to be multiplied by 16. Same standard procedure applies. 3 by 16 is 48 and the denominator stays the same. 48 divided by 4 is, uh, let me see, 10 by 4 is 40 plus 2 more is 48. Oops, that's 2. That's an ugly 2. 2 more is 48. So, uh, three quarters of a gallon is 12 cups. Think about it. There are 16 cups in a gallon, so one, a quarter gallon, one quarter gallon is four cups, two quarter gallons is eight cups, three quarter gallon is 12 cups. Okay? So these 12 cups now need to be added to whatever is in the cups column here. 12 plus 2 and a quarter is 14, and we have the quarter cup. And this could be your final answer, 3 gallons and 14 and a quarter cups. It's a fantastic final answer, but I want to show you how this stuff works with tablespoons. So I want to split the 14 and a quarter into a whole number and the fractional amount will be carried over into tablespoons. So 14 cups gets copied into the final answer and the quarter cup will be multiplied by 16 as 16 tablespoons make a cup. 1 by 16 is 16 and copy the divisor there. 16 divided by 4 is 4. And this 4 is tablespoons and it gets copied into the final answer here, TBSP. That's the final answer here. 3 gallons, 14 cups and 4 tablespoons. Now, if there was, just, just pretend say this number here was 17, so there, that would leave us with a remainder of 1 here, 1 over 4. 
if there is a fractional remainder of tablespoon here you can carry it over to teaspoons but three teaspoons make a tablespoon so that quarter would need to be multiplied by three not 16 because it's not 16 based multiples anymore okay likewise these 14 cups you can make it into pints and and quarts and and you can work out other smaller units between cups and tablespoons to your heart's content but they are not multiples of 16 so they don't carry in in multiples of 16 they carry in multiples of twos or fours or other numbers but uh, given this as a pattern you can work out uh, some of those fairly easily but the 16 based math is limited to this one and most cooking and most operations in the kitchen uses and these units not surprisingly not the other units so that's how to do this math